Hey, it's me, Zarnov, and welcome back to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition Legendary Difficulty Survival Mode playthrough. How are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? I'm doing fantastic myself. If you guys are enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying playing it, please consider liking, please consider subscribing. It helps me out more than you know. But in any case, let's get right into it. So... We're in the middle of the Thieves Guild. If you guys recall, in the last episode, we just got done decking ourselves out in some light armor, and that light armor is quite crazy. I'm just going to show it off again because I really love, I really love how it all like came together and how it's, uh, how it's all looking because our armor rating is just insane. So. Bows do 50% more damage. Pickpocket success is 50% better. Increases your health by 77 points. Destruction spells cost 30% less to cast. Pickpocket success 50% better. Carrying capacity increased by 46 points. Bows do 50% more damage. Destruction spells cost 30% less to cast. And pickpocket success 50% better. Sneaking 50% better. Pickpocket success 50% better. Sneaking 50% better. And obviously the mage backpack. And then uh, once you go over to active effects, I won't bother doing it, but once you go over to active effects and you look at all all of the uh, actual status effects and how they are being applied to us, we actually have stench in here. This place smells of death. Be on your guard. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, if you look at the active effects and you have a look at some of the other things we've got being the Necromage perk in the Restoration skill tree. For those of you that do not know, we are a vampire and the Necromage perk makes all spells, enchantments, everything more effective against the undead. Typically, that would be our fire spells, destruction spells, all that kind of stuff being more effective against vampires in the traditional sense if we were using them against vampires. But how that affects us is because we are also flagged as undead. If we get that perk, and that was a trapped chest, just seeing it now. Um, see, you can see there's a little Your trap there. Because that was, because we are uh, flagged as undead, that Necromage perk also applies to us and everything that we use, which makes all of our pickpocket, all of those enchantments that you guys saw from the pickpocket to the bow to everything has a 25% increase applied to it as well. So like, for example, our destruction uh, costing 30% less to cast on two things. There's an additional 25% applied to both of those 30%. And like, look at that. We just took out a Draugr Scourge. Or Scourge. Or however you, however you, <laughs> however you say it. In what? Like, I don't know. Five, I think it was like five arrows. And we have no perks invested in archery. No perks invested in sneak. No perks invested anywhere. It's just crazy powerful enchantments with the crazy powerful uh, additional benefit granted to us by the Necromage perk and then also um, the Necromage perk also helped us out when I was improving the using potions to improve the weapons and armor and also the enchantments so I believe it was like I was improving weapons and armor 170 something percent better so I had a potion that I had made that was improving things 141 percent better I can pull that from here okay cool <laughs> That was improving things 141% better by itself. And then with the Necromage perk applied, excuse me, Mercer Frey, it went all the way up to 171%. Absolutely, positively insane. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. Okay. Now that I'm done explaining myself and explaining everything that happened in the last episode and basically where we are at right now, let's keep going on with this the dungeon. There and watch out for the spikes. Like Carlia reset all of the traps. Thank you very much for that, Mercer. Would never be able to do this without you. We're going to give it a skip on that because unfortunately, the one thing I didn't prioritize, which I probably could have, but also uh, it's not super important, is I didn't put many carry weight enchantments on this armor set. I kind of wanted to actually focus on getting our things better, like our sneak, like our pickpocket, like our archery. I really wanted to focus on all those things. Hey there, Sleeping Beauty. One second, of course. <laughs> Sorry, I missed you. Okay, hey there, Sleeping Beauty. Hey, uh, yeah, I could tell you were getting some beauty sleep. Sorry to disturb you. I just kind of, you know, just got to finish you off. I hope you understand. It's just kind of just how it is. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, I, don't, I, I, don't know, I don't know how to say it. You were sleeping nice and peacefully, and I kind of interrupted it. For what reason you say it? Well, the reason that you probably would have eventually gotten up and made my life a bit of trouble, so I had to do it. I'm sorry. I know you're not very conscious of what it is, the things that you do, because you're kind of undead. You kind of just spellbound, kind of just do your own thing. Uh, thanks. Actually got a really hectic uh, set of armor, in case you weren't listening. 
for that whole intro. Um, yeah, my sneak would actually be better than yours. Pretty confident, I would say. Now, is that going to go off? Indeed what, what it is. is. Uh, nothing. Yeah, nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay. Let's keep on moving down. Oh, my goodness. I'm just so happy that I made this armor set, that I've got the bow where it is at. Like, th this bow, as I said, literally zero, in zero perks applied into bow. And, like... I, I'm not even sure if I got if I showed you guys the bow, but this is the bow. 215 points of damage, plus all of the extra damage that we have applied from our enchantments. And also, burns target 67 points, target takes 67 points of shock damage. The only conceivable way this bow is better is if I had the chaos enchantment, which we could get from the champion's flagel, but I didn't really want to disenchant the champion's flagel. And it's kind of unfortunate that that's, it's a really hard enchantment to get. I believe you can get the enchantment from Glover Mallory, the smith in Solstheim. You can actually get the enchantment off of him, but you've got to be really lucky that an item actually spawns that he's selling in, like in his, in his uh, selling inventory, that an item will actually spawn with the enchantment. You have to really luck out. That's the only way that I'm aware that I can get aside from disenchanting the champion's quadril, which I'm never going to do. Why would I reset that? There is no way I'd ever want to reset that. Let's take the gold here. Um, okay, dokie. Okay. Gonna say that this door right here just will give us a little something extra and is not the way we gotta go. So I'm gonna come back and picky the little locky. I could have also put enchantments of, you know, um, Lock picking is however many percent easier and all that, but really I don't find too much of a use for that, to be honest. I know that's sounding funny now because I've just failed twice in this adept lock, but I typically, <laughs> if you've been watching the rest of my playthrough, I'm typically not someone who struggles too much with the whole lock picking minigame. I actually really, really enjoy it. So it's not something I ever put any perks into or ever get any enchantments for because I kind of find them as like a little bit wasteful. There's definitely more useful things I could get those enchantments and things for. Hey, buddy. Oh, my goodness. My sneak. Zero, literally zero perks and sneak. Zero perks and sneak. And also zero perks and archery. And we are just, we are powerhouses. We are absolute powerhouses. I'm loving it. And look how slowly, because of, as I said, the, uh, the Necromage perk also extends to enchantments, as I've said multiple times. So our whole 30% uh, less to cast destruction spells on two items, I think that's actually like up at 70% with the Necromage perk applied, or even up at 80%. So our enchantment for this bow actually lasts a heck of a lot longer as well. Like, re it lasts a really long time because these are destruction enchantments. They last a really long time. My gosh, I'm loving this so much. Oh, not liking that at all. <laughs> he actually got us pretty good there. Okay, I'm going to back up before he hits me with it, before he gets a couple swings off of me. I'm not sure what's happening here, but I might... Uh, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Let's get this guy down. Here we go. Come on now. Come on now. Oh my gosh, we're just doing so much damage. Like, we are sitting so pretty. For survival mode legendary difficulty, we are sitting so comfortably. Like, so, so comfortably. Look at this. I do not even need to... I, I know I'm going to keep repeating it. And I'm going to keep repeating it. My archery is almost at 50 now. And I don't have any perks in archery. I don't need any perks in archery just because of how... Just because of how Skyrim is. Like, again, I'm... I'm I'm going to keep saying it. If you guys watched my review video, you would have heard me say this as well. There's just no limitations on what you can do in Skyrim. Like, literally none. Like, I started off this whole playthrough as a pure mage. And now, at level 70, I'm dabbling in archery. And I can do that. And I'm not severely penalized. It's not hectically hard. It's just, you got if you do the right things and you set yourself up well enough, you can completely change your entire play style. And it's not a huge, massive headache at all like this <laughs> that's why i love this game so much it's just it's awesome i love it in case you couldn't tell in case you couldn't tell in the uh 91 episodes now playthrough that i actually do like this game i'm not 91 episodes in because i dislike it <laughs> just in case you couldn't tell oh my goodness here we go Mercer. good stuff good stuff friend can't wait until we actually go see Carlyle, right yeah it's gonna be so great when we get to go take out Carlyle. i can't believe she'd do something like that to gallus he seemed like such a good guy and i, I don't know maybe it wasn't necessary to kill her horse and all that because the horse is kind of innocent but i reckon you're a good guy mercer Frey. i don't reckon you'd do anything i reckon uh i reckon uh it was uh 
you you were just you're just super mad. That's what it is. You're just super mad for your friend Gallus and what Carlyde did to him. Oh my goodness, I'm so angry at her as well. Can't believe she'd do something like that. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> just just absolute hectic foreshadowing going on there. <laughs> Uh, no, and yes, let's lockpick this door. My goodness, the sneak, the sneak is just, oh, zero perk points in sneak, and look at us. I can just press crouch, and I'm in sneak. The base game, Skyrim, without these enchantments that i got going on, absolutely impossible to be sneaking the way I'm sneaking right now. <laughs> Daedric male boots. Uh, are they only way four? Why not? Why not? Why not? Okay and detected i might put like a couple things a couple perks in sneak maybe because then that would just absolutely top it off like if i put maybe a couple perks in sneak maybe a couple perks in archery i feel like would be really topped off as a character but like i'm also on i'm also of the like stance that do we even need it and the answer is probably not probably don't need it but like would it be useful i guess but like how long would it be useful for I don't know, because I don't plan... Oh, I'm using the Sun Hallowed Arrows. Probably shouldn't be using them. All good. Steel Arrow, and bang, 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 bang. Leave that. Let's switch out these arrows, because these are the good ones that we got to use Oriel's bow for. Let's just go regular Elven Arrows. Yep, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey, buddy. Boom. Archery increased to 50. Wow, we're not going <laughs> to... At this rate... <laughs> At this rate, we are not going to be doing archery for very long. Like, this is going up substantially quicker than the one-handed and two-handed was, I believe. I mean, maybe that's just me, but I'm pretty sure it, it definitely feels like it's gone up very quick. I feel like I only started using archery a couple episodes ago. And yeah, I did. I'm pretty sure I started using archery at the Golden Hills Plantation. And that's the first, the first instance of us using archery, and we're already at level 50. <laughs> and that's what, like two episodes later. Did I get you, Massa? I think I definitely got you. Sorry about that, buddy. It's all good. I'll make it up to you when I when I when I take Carlia's life for being so terrible. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, because she's awful. Okay, let's do that. Let's take that. Let's nope and let's nope and okie dokie. Good stuff, Massa. Good stuff. We're, we're we're working good as a team. Clever. Rig to wake the Draugr, I bet. Don't blunder into anything. Okie dokie, just walk super close. <laughs> walk super close to me saying that super slowly and then just pull a scowl on your face. <laughs> that is the worst face. <laughs> I've never, never actually taken the time to look at his angry face. Oh my goodness. Three thieves. I'm pretty sure we already read this. Indeed we have. The name rings a bell. So if I, if we knock any of these right, all of these tombs are going to open? No, they're already open. And you are the one that quite literally hit the bone charm. Okay, so you can't say I'm a bad thief for any reason at all for the rest of this dungeon or, or forever, period. Because you quite literally just hit the bone charm that you were telling me not to blunder into and you did it. So Mercer, that's all you, buddy. All, all the fails of this whole journey are on you now. Okay, let's... we got a whole room here, so we might back up a little bit. Actually, we might not. We might be able to kill this Draugr pretty quick. Yes, indeed, we did. Okay. My goodness, the opportunity for archery skill-ups right now is absolutely insane. Let's hit this guy because we've also got shock applied to the bow, so we will be draining his magicka, his little frostbite spell, while we hit him. Because the frostbite spell is obviously magicka and we don't want him using that because it's kind of annoying to deal with. It slows down our little buddy there, Mercer, while he's trying to hit him. Thank you. There goes the Ochranarch as well because, yeah, he's definitely the one that would have conjured the Ochranarch. And hello you up there, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you. I'll be getting to you soon, just taking on your buddy here. Don't uh, don't come into the scene too quickly. Good stuff, Mercer, good stuff. And he's gone, now you, bang. And there's one over here. Bang, didn't get him. Bang, gotcha. And bang, gotcha. And now you see me. My goodness, we are going to be getting... The sneak isn't increasing as quick as I thought it would, though. That's the only thing. The sneak is increasing pretty slowly. But, again, I mean, to be honest, I am not at all averse to, you know, continuing this playstyle for a good bit. I'm finding this really fun because I never actually play as this. I never, ever use the bow. Whoop. <laughs> kind of got messed up there. And I'm pretty sure that bubbly effect on us... Oh, gosh. Did I just take a bunch of damage? 
I did. Ooh, wee, that's not good. Let's go minor healing. That did nothing. Plentiful healing. We must be fatigued or something. We are. Ah, that's not good. That's not good at all. <clears throat> when was our last autosave? Oh no. Oh no, this is the scariest part. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, that's painful. Ooh, this hurts. This really hurts me, Mercer. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you guys back up to speed. Oh, golly doogly, I think we're about up to where we were, pulling this chain and coming down here. Is this about where we were? Yeah, it's pretty much where we were. Yeah, I'll just, I'm just going to start us up back here. <laughs> because uh, I've got myself back up to where we were effectively with archery. Um, I think we, I think I've got myself up to level 50 again, at least. That's going to be a lockpicking increase to 82. Love to see it. Where did I get my archery to last time compared to where it is now? I think I got it to like 50 or 51 and I'm at 49 now. So yeah, we're basically basically where we are. I've basically done everything the exact same, looted the exact same things. Probably looted even a touch more, to be honest. So maybe I've got like 10 more gold than usual than I did on my last, uh, come, when I was last coming through here. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe. You see that, you see that quest marker right there? That's how close we are, or how close we were to an autosave before we died last time. Oh, that is upsetting to see. <laughs> we were just around the corner from getting an, over an autosave. In any case, it's all good. Let's get... I'm going to say this is where we got our archery up to 50 or 51. It's right here at this segment with this Draugr Lord and his old pally behind him. So let's get him down. Yep. And then let's get him down. Yep. My sneak, as I said, isn't going up as quick as I thought it would be. But also, as I've said, as I was alluding to before we died last time, I'm not at all averse to continuing this playstyle for a bit. Oh, not using the sun hallowed arrows again. Let's get the elven arrows. Yeah, as I alluded to before we died last time, I'm not at all averse to continuing this playstyle to even after we get the levels that we want out of it because I find this really fun. As I said, I'm usually, I usually never ever got him. I usually never do stealth type characters, especially to start off with. Like, especially to start off with, I'm always, always usually a mage or a warrior type. I never go for a full... Did I just pick up a weapon? I definitely did just pick up a weapon that I do not want to be carrying. Yeah, drop that little bit of garbage. Sorry, not a bit of garbage. I'm sure it was useful to you, but just not great for me. Let's do that. Didn't get the sneak attack off for some reason. Oh, well, all good. Now, let's get him down and get our Archery 250. Perfecto mundo. Yeah, uh, usually never ever start off with a stealth type character. So that's probably, that that could very well be the type of character we start off with for the 100% playthrough. Because I've got, a, I've got, a, I do have a whole character build in mind that I want to do. Uh, who they're going to be, you know, what their class will be, what the backstory will kind of be. And then... Obviously, that'll evolve throughout the playthrough as we have evolved in this playthrough where we've continued to change up the playstyles, which, by the way, I don't know. I don't think a lot of people tend to usually do this. Like, they kind of just stick with one thing and then, like, if they're a one-handed dagger character, they'll just stay as, like, a one-handed dagger. I'm going to drop a quick save right there because I am learning from what happened last time. Yeah, a lot of people tend to do, like, the whole, yeah, okay, so I'm a one-handed dagger. That's how I'm going to play it. That's how I want to do it. Yada, yada, yada. And then they, like, never, ever change it for the rest of the playthrough. And I don't know. I'm really liking what I've done in this playthrough where I've been obviously the pure mage got all of those levels up got us to a good base got us to a good point where we can do a lot of damage take a lot of damage and like still be useful or still just just generally good characters just generally put ourselves in a good place and um and then obviously it's branching out from there uh started going into one-handed and then two-handed and then now archery and sneak and heavy armor and smithing and all those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, just really, really, really fun way to do it that I haven't really... What, what, why am I holding that skiver? Really, really fun way to do it that I've never typically done in my previous playthroughs because I've always kind of just... Like, I've, I might dabble, like, a little bit in different skills and get them up, but, like, I've never actually fully committed to, okay, pure mage start, and then, okay, now we're going, and we're just going to dive headfirst into a warrior and start being a warrior, and then, okay, now that we're done with warrior, we're going to dive headfirst into being, like, a sneaky, stealthy, damaging type character, and that's just what we're doing. 
and like it just really goes towards proving the the point I made in the uh, review video I made where you can literally do whatever you want and this game will not punish you endlessly for whatever your beginning build type was like for instance in this in this very instance right now pure mage to start off the game and now I'm not being punished for doing this like obviously I'm a bit weaker and I'm taking a bit of damage, especially right now, because I'm standing right next to that Atronarch and he's making life a bit difficult. And I've got a Draugr Death Ward flinging arrows at me, making my life a bit difficult. But other than that, I mean, it's not really, it's not like a huge headache like you would expect it to be in typical RPG games. Like, it's very, very doable. And you're not, as I said, endlessly punished for, hey, I want to try something different in the game. Just like, well, too bad. You're just going to start a whole new playthrough. Yeah, it's just, it's just not like at all like that. And again, it's just another reason why I love Skyrim so much. But in any case, this isn't the review video. This isn't a review video. Let's get back into the gameplay and let's do this right before he kills me because he is definitely killing me with that next shot and I do not want to do all that again. So we're going to go full health and RNG, miss the arrow. Perfecto mundo. We're going to... We're gonna come over here and just drop a quick save real quick because we've done, we've progressed a fair bit and I don't really feel like killing this whole room of Draugr all over again. <laughs> oh my goodness, okie dokie. And where's that Skeever? Is that, Skeever's definitely not on our side. Yeah, didn't think so. There we go. And one more. My killing blow. My kill, my kill, my kill, my kill, no, so mine. <laughs> let's take the arrows, let's take the gold. Elven arrow, yes, 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 leave all that. My gosh, there's a few of these bad boys to loot. How many am I going to loot? I'm going to loot exactly that many. Okay, let's continue on. Oh, I'll take it back. I'm going to loot that guy as well. And I'll loot this guy as well. There we go. Okay, we'll continue on now. Ah, uh, we'll loot this guy too. Didn't want the bone meal, but whatever. We'll take it. Now we'll continue on. <laughs> let's take, uh, see what's in this and Let's see what's in this and Three gold, three gold. Definitely worth looting, right, guys? Yeah, 100%. That's the Zahn of Way. Loot everything. Two gold, three gold. It all stacks up. Okay. This is the way we got to go. There's a little bit more to explore down there. So you know what we're going to do, guys. We're going to explore. Let's chuck this arrow or this uh, bow away. Sorry. And let's uh, let's see what's down here. Because I saw there was some stairs. Yep. And it looked like there was a little doorway. Yep. And it probably leads around to there. Yep. Let's have a look. See at what Skyrim is hiding from me. What it doesn't want me to see. What it's only going to reward the players who explore, right? Bethesda loves doing that. You, if you explore that little bit further, you get rewarded, right? You get some kind of some kind of cool bit of kit, some kind of cool, you know, little bit of armor, unique something or other. And I can see exactly what this is. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's uh, take this and this. Why not? Don't usually take the stamina, but whatever. I felt like it in the split second. Okie dokie. So, we're going to do this because we'll definitely be taking this back to Delvin Mallory. Those are all going to fall. Merce is going to take all the damage because he's a bit of an nincompoop and he's not going to... You know, you can take one step forward and you will not be burning alive. One step forward, you will not be burning alive. Guess not, though. I guess you're happy for that. I was definitely expecting a guy to pop out of there, but I guess not. Okay, let's take that and let's continue onwards. Onwards and upwards, they say. Onwards and upwards. Okay. Let's yeah, it's up there, and yeah, the new the new room where we would have gotten the auto save, where we wouldn't have died, where we wouldn't have had to start the whole dungeon all over again, is just up here. It's just up here. I was so close but so far away, and I had to do the whole dungeon all over again. It's all good though. Snowbell Sanctum, you're saying something, Mercer, and I'm missing it. Probably would have been child's play for me too if you weren't here because you are definitely not the master thief that you claim to be. I don't know how you're the guild master, but you quite literally blundered into the bone charm that you told me not to blunder into. Gosh, you got an ugly. <laughs> you got <laughs> not, not like claims to be a thief. Really? You really gonna hit me with that? <laughs> He's got such an ugly expression. I've been saying ugly face. It's the wrong word. Ugly expressions. Look at this guy's expressions. They're just awful. <laughs> okay, Dave. Actually, no. Is there anything we can talk about? No, there isn't. Okay. Keep your eyes open. Your mouth shut. Gosh, you are terrible to work with. You are terrible to work with. Once we get this Carlia chick and we're out of here, I'm. I hope there's no more quests with you because I wouldn't like that. You're terrible to work with. You do not at all even try to make it slightly pleasant. Hello there, Draugr Death Lord. Sorry to awaken you from your slumber. I'm just going to hit you with that. Now, if I do this and I get... Am I able to get, like, my sneak going? Because that's the one thing that we are probably going to struggle with the most out of anything is getting our sneak up. So I'm going to come over here. And hopefully we can start... Let's, uh, let's go into Illusion. 
Let's do this. Go invisibility and muffle. We'll go that and that. Oh my goodness, the uh, the the magicka that that's taking. I'm not used to it. Just absolutely sapping everything away from me. Okie dokie. Now, no, that's not what I wanted to do at all. But thanks, Skyrim. Okay. Okay. It's not looking like we're going to be able to re-stealth here, unfortunately. I really want to, though, for the sake of sneak, but all good. Let's just start doing damage with the bow. Sneak can be something we can focus on later if it becomes, like, a real big issue. Because our sneak, I mean, as I said, with the enchantments we have, it's not actually that bad. It's just not great. Obviously, it's, it definitely does seem like, even though I've got the perks of, like, you know, sneaking 40% or 50% better, whatever it is, uh, it definitely seems as though the perks kind of uh, pay dividends in terms of how much they help on top. Because I'm pretty sure, even if you do, like, get the perks, they're still like, hey, you know, you are 25% harder to detect. Yeah, there you go. You are 20% harder to detect when sneaking. Um, but is that... So does that mean... Is is that like is is that twenty percent harder to detect when sneaking? Is that difficult? Is that different to the enchantment we have technically? Because we have where is it? Da, 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 da. Sneaking, sneaking. So sneaking is fifty percent better, but it doesn't make us harder to detect and whatnot. So I wonder if that slight change in wording is like a a, a specific change in the actual values that determines like how good your sneak is and whether or not those are two different things by nature if you know what i mean so obviously but I, I, it definitely seems like the perks are slightly different it definitely seems like if i was to get like that you are 20 percent hard to detect when sneaking um that'll be probably more effective than the sneaking enchantment we have it pro it probably seems like this these sneaking enchantments i have might be more effective like in conjunction with the perks if you know what i mean because they might be, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's really hard to, it's really hard for me to try to explain what I'm trying to say. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Though, because they relate to like two different things in sneaking by nature, if you know what I mean. Uh, at least I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So they don't, they're not exactly the same. Because otherwise, you could do what I have done, where you just have like your sneaking up at 100% harder, or want your 100% better at sneaking but the harder to detect value is different. But like if it wasn't, then there would just be no point in putting any perks in the sneak because you could just get the enchantments I have and you would never have to and whatnot, which is what I was thinking precisely was the case about 10 minutes ago. But now seeing how easily I am detected or not easily I'm detected, but how easily I am to be like, to, to, to like re-stealth is a lot harder. Um, and when I am putting damage down range, I am detected slightly easier. I'm kind of thinking the perks work a little bit differently to the enchantments. Like, they're not... Yeah. And again, I've, I've, I've probably elaborated this point to ad nauseum. I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. But oh my goodness, three Draugr Death Lords. Four Draugr Death Lords. <laughs> Okie dokie. We really got to be careful here. I'm going to try and remain in self for as long as possible. Fortunately for us, we are in a dark place. So that's just going to pay dividends in helping us stay hidden or stay sneaky. And hopefully we can, we should be able to get a fair bit of archery done here. Like, I reckon we probably can squeeze out, like, another two or three levels with all of these Draugr Death Lords. It all depends, of course, on how quickly Mercer kills them. Hopefully he's not doing too much damage. Wouldn't actually even mind it if he went down and these guys kind of just wandered around looking for me. But I don't think... Mer oh, Sneak is at 48. That's actually higher than what I thought it was. Okay. The Sneak's doing pretty well. I thought the Sneak was a lot low. I thought our Sneak was, like, 20. I just haven't checked it. That's very good. Very happy with that. Okay, so I take back everything I said. Everything's tracking very nicely. Everything is tracking very nicely. <laughs> this is really good. A uh, little bit more. Oh my goodness, the archery is coming up real nice. That's already three levels, and we still got two more Draugr Death Lords. Okie dokie. Loving that. Boom. And boom. And don't move. Boom. There we go. And a couple more for you. Oh, not the burning damage got you. Okay. Now you, the last one, lucky last. Mercer, don't do too much damage. I'd like to squeeze out as much uh, as much XP as I can on this guy. Miss that, dang. Let's get that one. And I've been hidden this whole time. Hmm. I have been, well, not hidden, but like not fully detected the whole time. 
Yeah, I don't know. If you guys know, how, if anyone actually does know how that whole sneak thing works and whether or not the perks do relate directly to the enchantments and if they're the same thing or if they affect slightly different values and the codes and how and, and how enemy NPC detect you and all that, please let me know. Please feel free to let me know. Like, I'm 100% the kind of person where I don't even mind any, like, backseat gaming. If you're like, hey, Zanov, you should go do this. I'm not going to look at that and be like, don't tell me what to do. Don't stop backseat gaming. Like, it's not, it doesn't irritate me like it does other people. Like, if you have suggestions, please throw them my way. Like, I, I really, I really want to hear everything you guys have to say because I am not at all under the illusion or under the impression that I actually know everything there is to know in Skyrim. I mean, that's just evident by this playthrough. The amount of things I've pointed out where I just, like, as many hours of, as I've played Skyrim, which is definitely in the thousands, by the way, I've definitely played Skyrim for a ridiculous amount of time. I'm still a person who's never 100% of the game. I still have never done all the quests. I still haven't... We're on the right track. She's been through here as well. Thank you for the input. I still haven't seen all the random interactions, like, as I said, to this day. There's been that many different random interactions in this playthrough alone that I've never seen before that have just absolutely blown my mind. Even from things like um, that, the Ethereal Crown quest, where you come out of that with the Ethereal Crown, and then you come across, I believe the name is Taron Dreth, or something like that, which is um, Katraya's old uh, partner that was looking for Ethereum in Skyrim, I believe, and you actually have a random interaction with him after you finish the whole, uh, what is it? Is it Lost to the Ages or is that the Gold or Amulet quest? Hmm, I'm not sure what it is, but whatever the, whatever the quest is called where you get the Ethereum crown or you have the choice of the Ethereum crown, the Ethereal spear, or the uh, spell, is it Spellbreaker? I'm not sure, that shield. Uh, yeah, you will eventually, or you can, it's completely random, you can come across a random interaction with a Taron Dreth, which is Carla with, well, there are, there's so many names, so many names, and I'm trying to remember all of them, and you will come across Katria's previous partner who basically betrayed her in the whole thing, and then he tries to kill you as well, just little interactions like that, never, ever, ever experienced it until this playthrough, and, uh, didn't quite catch what you said there, sorry. But, let's open this door, and looks like we've got, ooh, jeepers, okie dokie. I'm gonna stay hidden. You can be angry all you want that the door opened. And boom, and boom. Oh, missed that, nope, don't wanna be using these arrows, please. Let's switch to a dragon bone arrow, hey? Let's see how good these go, boom. Doesn't look like they do much. <laughs> yeah, I don't really, I don't really necessarily feel the difference in uh, when, like, sorry, Mercer, sorry. I don't really feel the difference when you like when you. I mean, I, I suppose there definitely is a difference. There would have to be, but like, it doesn't feel like there's a huge difference between like, say, if I used iron arrows and then you use dragon bone arrows with their base damage. Uh, yeah, I don't really feel like there's a huge difference. I suppose there wouldn't be because you know in comparison or relatively speaking is it is it like the ba is it whatever damage your bow has and then that damage is added with like the arrows so say if i have this bow which is doing an insane 222 damage and then i have these arrows is it 222 plus 24 damage is that the total damage output or is it percentage based off something else you know depending on how much damage your bow does will depend how much damage the arrows does like is that is that a thing or is it just completely cumulative because if that is the case then if i'm already doing 222 damage with the bow then yeah it wouldn't really feel like there was much of a difference between like an iron arrow and a daedric arrow because obviously relatively speaking the change is very small compared to what is the huge base damage i'm getting with the bow hey there buddy if you just want to stay still like you are that would be perfect no, 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 don't, don't start getting all active on me. You were staying still and nice and calm and easy to kill for a very long while there. Eh, but that's not going to continue, I can see. Oh, well. You're almost dead now. Just uh, just stay still. Just a little bit longer, buddy. Just a little bit longer. There we go. Maybe a couple more shots on ya. Man, I've wasted a few of these Daedric arrows. Would like it if I stopped that. And there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. And it looks like we got a word here, and it looks like my fatigue is going up. It looks like we're not doing too great for our survival mode stats, but everywhere else we are cheering. Everywhere else we're having a great time. <laughs> Okie dokie. It looks like this room is clear. 
Uh, let's... Anybody going to pop out of there? No, hopefully not. Let's have a look at what this shout is. Cannot remember. It is hand disarm. That's a pretty handy shout. That's not that's not too bad. I might might have a go at uh, using that because as you guys are all very well aware, I don't tend to make use of shouts as much as I definitely should. I should definitely be uh, shouts is something uh, is a is, is an aspect of the game that because uh, and I've spoken about this heaps before because I don't usually hey excuse me stop running. Because I don't tend to typically get uh, into the main quest of the game for a long time, like in every playthrough I've ever done, I always push the main quest all the way back and do all the side stuff first because I just love doing that. And it kind of uh, it kind of translates into me never really needing to use shouts ever. And so I just like because I play the majority of my playthrough is usually always without shouts. I am just usually very comfortable playing the game without shouts being a factor in the game like something to use which is kind of a disservice because there are a lot of there are a lot of points in the game where it's like wow i should have used a shout there or wow a shout would have been very handy here but mercer what do you get what do you, you reckon you can do this because i don't think we got a claw you reckon you can use your you know your little lock picking skilly ah, it's one yeah of the infamous nordic puzzle doors how quaint yeah, how quaint. How about that? Claw, they're normally impossible to open. Since I'm certain Carlyle already did away with it, we're on our own. But you've got like good lock picking skills, have a right? Weakness, if you know how to exploit it. Yep. Quite simple, really. Sweet. Carlyle is close, I'm certain of it. Now let's get moving. How did you do that? <laughs> how did you do that? You didn't even touch the door. You did not even touch the door. You just walked up to it and, and then everything sat. I got my eyes on you, man. So, okay. Let's uh, let's go find Carlyle. Oh, 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 what's, go what's going on? Completed find Carlyle? What? What's happening? I thought my Skyrim crashed there for a second. I was like, come on, not now. <laughs> Do you honestly think your arrow will reach me before my blade finds your heart? Give me a reason to try. You're a clever girl, Carlia. Buying Golden Glow Estate and funding Haunting Brew Meadery was inspired. To ensure an enemy's defeat, you must first undermine his allies. It was the first lesson Gallus taught us. You always were a quick study. Not quick enough. Otherwise, Gallus would still be alive. Gallus had his wealth and he had you. All he had to do was look the other way. Did you forget the oath we took as Nightingales? Did you expect him to simply ignore your methods? Enough of this mindless banter. Come, Carlia. It's time for you and Gallus to become reunited. I'm no fool, Mercer. Crossing blades with you would be a death sentence. But I can promise the next time we meet, it will be your undoing. My goodness. Some lore bombs dropping in this episode. Mercer, you traitorous little... How interesting. It appears Gallus' history has repeated itself. Carlia has provided me the means to be rid of you, and this ancient tomb becomes your final resting place. But do you know what intrigues me the most? The fact that this was all possible because of you. Farewell. I'll be certain to give Brynjolf your regards. My goodness, how dare you, Mercer. I never saw this coming. I've never done this quest line before. I cannot believe you would do. <laughs> no, I've obviously done this before, but my goodness, the first time I did this quest, I was not actually at all expecting that. And I really felt something for Mercer in the way that I really wanted to kill him. <laughs> I really, really did. Oh, Skyrim's just, it's beautiful how it does things like that. Carlia. Easy. Don't get up so quickly. How are you feeling? Pretty terrible, pretty terrible. I just took an arrow 
Uh, and then I just got stabbed in the chest, and now I'm waking up outside in the cold. And survival mode is known to be pretty lethal, so I'm doing awful. <laughs> I am doing just awful. Hold on, you shot me. No, I saved your life. My arrow was tipped with a unique paralytic poison. It slowed your heart and kept you from bleeding out. Had I intended to kill you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Hmm, very true. Okay, a bit of trust instantly granted you away. Why save me? My original intention was to use that arrow on Mercer, but I never had a clear shot. I made a split-second decision to get you out of the way that prevented your death. Why should I believe you? Without the antidote I administered, you'd be as still as a statue. I treated your wounds and didn't leave you defenseless. The poison on that arrow took me a year to perfect. I only had enough for a single shot and yet I used it on you. All I had hoped was to capture Mercer alive. Ah, so I kind of ruined everything. <laughs> Sorry about that. Why capture Mercer alive? Mercer must be brought before the guild to answer for what he's done. He needs to pay for Gallus's murder. Agreed, and my attempted murder. I really want to get him now. How will you prove it now? My purpose in using Snowvale Sanctum to ambush Mercer wasn't simply for irony's sake. Before both of you arrived, I recovered a journal from Gallus's remains. I suspect the information we need is written inside. Well, what's it say? I wish I knew. The journal is written in some sort of language I've never seen before. Perhaps it could be translated? Enther. Gallus's friend at the College of Winterhold. Of course. It's the only outsider Gallus trusted with the knowledge of his Nightingale identity. There's that word again. Nightingale. There were three of us. Myself, Gallus, and Mercer. We were an anonymous splinter of the Thieves Guild in Riften. Perhaps I'll tell you more about it later. Right now, you need to head for Winterhold with the journal and get the translation. Here, take these as well. They may prove useful for your journey. Gallus has encoded journal added, stamina, poison added. Anything else added? You said take these as if you were giving me a lot, and you didn't. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um... Tell me about Gallus. Oh, actually, no, 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 no. Okay. We are going to have to end it here today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. And leave any comments below. Any recommendations. Any recommendations. Or just stop by to say good day. Because I promise I'll respond to everyone. But most of all, regardless of whether or not you do anything I've asked, please have a fantastic day. Also, I know that was a pretty abrupt ending, but I'm just looking over at OBS now, and I'm like, wowza, I've got to cut it there. So, again, please have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.